In the presence of fire and water, They marry the couple, No mention of flowers. And in the painting, the most important thing, supposedly, one would say, is the soulmates, but also the, uh, self-mastery one. But here is my thoughts on the Eck wedding ceremony. So in accordance with spiritual law, the couple can Eck each other within the bounds of Eck. And that wedding ceremony is updated and taken from Stranger by the River and Drums of Eck by Paul Twitchell, but Harold Clint is responsible for the content here, and it sounds like he actually uh, did this. Now, uh, he actually, you know, played a physical role in composing this book. Um, Eck and Carr clerics are supposed to have Eck weddings as legal ceremonies and to know the laws of the area when it comes to that sort of thing. A marriage is properly solemnized if it fits the criteria of that faith, and Ekankar, since it's more of a corporation and New Age religion rather than a traditional religion, it's not as solemnized by God as it is by the state, is the implication that I kind of get there. And like the other cere uh, celebration of life ceremonies, the bowl of water and the bowl of fire are on the right of the officiator. Ekankar music can't are ek appropriate music yeah ek here means ek and car um can be recorded or live and the officiator of the ceremony opens shares his name tells the name of the people being married says that it's a ek and uh, the says that it's the ek wedding ceremony or you know, and then comes his presentation of the basic Eck teachings through his opening. Same thing. The hue is divine. It, spiritual eye, right there. Um, the fire, God, the Holy Spirit, water. This kind of implies that God is distant, which I believe that God is omnipresent, or closer than the angels and whatnot, but ek can also mean God is a verb to people. Sigmod can mean God is a noun. It's really strange to separate those two, and the partner will kneel at some point, and after this little introduction that they do, however many ch times they choose to as a group, or if only one person says that, whatever. Um, then there's a reading. I think the reading is from Stranger by the River. It may include parts of Drums of Eck. I would mention that in the Islamic wedding ceremony, either no verses particularly are recited because they just marry each other according to the terms of Al-Quran and the Sunnah of Prophet Muhammad, Salam Alaikum, 
and they might say the first verse of Surah 4 or the 21st verse of Surah 30. Those are the two most popular ones. The We're all of the same universal soul. Uh, we're all from the same soul verse and the soulmates God created spouses for each other love sort of verse um, and then there'll be an affirmation where the hand is placed through the fire again symbolizing those trials Well, God would witness anything the light beings or Gabriel, the Holy Spirit, or God as a verb, would be witnessed by God as a noun, because that's the same thing. Um, but some people, when they say Eck, they mean Harold Clamp. So, if you're not if you can't think of something else, I would not recommend going to an Eck worship service if you can't worship God by doing so. And then there are the vows. And I don't think that the, the light of the world is... I thought in Eckenkar it's supposed to be, you know, God is a, a verb, the light and sound of, of God. So the light of the world of somebody's world is supposed to be God. One obeys the spouse when it's not disobeying God. But no, no, that's not what's being implied here. That the you know the man and the woman are each other's light of the world, and I think that's going too far. But the treating each other justly—that's perfectly fair. And I don't like this whole people referring to me as their child if I'm not their child. But that's how the officiator acts in this part. And then there's a blessing. The left hand on the woman's head and the right hand on the man's head after dipping his hands in this bowl of water. And I was going to replace the turtle's water dish, and I could show you that water dish of fresh, clean water as part of this, but I'm going to leave that out. And then there's the exchange of rings. In the Islamic wedding, there is a man supposed to at least be able to feed the woman a meal of fruit. Or, you know, a handful of fruit to marry her. Uh, a dowry could be as little as a steel ring. It could be gold or a car or whatever. There's the exchange of the dowry or the promise of the exchange of the dowry. But in Ekankar, somebody might exchange rings. It says that it's optional. It starts with the man placing the finger on the woman's... Placing the ring on the woman's finger, then the man on that... And it's a symbol of love and their bond. And then there's a conclusion. Promising to initiate the child, children into the Ekankar mysteries. Or to present them for such. And the couple kneels as the official says this conclusion. And that's also part of the Islamic wedding implication is that and Mary is that when they hit puberty, they can choose whatever they want, but whether it's a mixed marriage or not, that is part of the thing to raise the child in the faith, and they choose otherwise if they wish. But there's more, uh, the officiator touches his thumb to the spiritual eye. Passes his hand over the couple's head, and at some point, the right thumb of him or her touches their heads too. And then they say that they're joined in the li all light and sound as God's, so that's, you know, whatever. Um, 
in some cultures there is child marriage and most of those cultures you don't consummate the marriage with the child the child usually doesn't may not even move in until they hit puberty and then if they're sane it's up to them whether they want to or not um and there's and even for post-adolescent marriage in the islamic system not only does the man and the woman give their consent but they have somebody testify on the behalf of the woman and everybody has the right to divorce and all this other stuff but that's a particular safeguard that the women have is somebody that has testified on their behalf and I think that's all I need to say about marriages. You may have more than one soulmate in life, but one keeps the terms of a marriage. Now, there's not the implication in the act wedding ceremony that the couple has kept the law of chastity. It's not necessary to expose people with their violations either. But Ekinkar also uses the term soulmate to refer to a couple of people who may be completely platonically involved, no physical contact whatsoever, but their relationship is about what is spiritual or the Ekinkar group or whatever spiritual purpose or motivation that they are working together with, that is the term soulmate for them. And in my painting I that I pointed out that in the corner of Gemini, you have soulmates and lovers. Hopefully they're united in the same thing, but I haven't been married, so I wouldn't say that's It would be appropriate for me to take a lover. Um, but marriage, the secondary purpose of marriage other than chastity is to have children. So it's perfectly reasonable for men to seek out women who are of childbearing age, even if they are past the age where women their age are able to do such um but always remember to put family first 